Uh, my name is Kirsty Tinto. I'm an associate research scientist at the Mont Doherty Earth Observatory, and I work in the Polar Geophysics Group in Airborne Geoscience. This is a really exciting project because it's it's really interdisciplinary. We have um, we have the plane that has an instrument suite attached to the side of it uh, that all fit into a little pod about the size of a sofa. And uh, so we, we have instruments that measure the surface of the ice and the interior structure of the ice. And an ice shelf is floating. So we're, we're even looking down um, to work out what's at the bottom of the water underneath the ice so we can see what shape the seafloor is. And um, this particular project is a really large piece of Antarctica that just hasn't been mapped properly before. I'd like people to know that there, there are huge parts of the planet that we just haven't seen. This area was last mapped in the 1970s, and there's one point placed every 55 kilometers across the ice shelf, which you, you can hide a national park <laughs> in between the points that we've measured um, in the past. And so there are huge swathes of Antarctica that still need to be just properly raw mapped. And the work that we do with that is to take all the measurements of the surfaces and the edges of the ice and the size of the rock and the kind of the rock and work out the whole uh, interconnected system of Antarctica. So how the ocean flows across the seafloor and how the warmth from that ocean affects the ice that's on top of it and ultimately how stable the ice sheets are that flow into the ice shelf. So we still have a lot of long groundwork to do just to get the basic mapping in place so that we can get really um, improved and precise predictions about what Antarctica is going to do in the future. When I was in high school, I studied the sciences. We were quite um, homed in by the time we finished school. But I also spent a lot of time outdoors and hiking and just going on expeditions and trips, going camping. And I discovered when I had to apply for university courses that you could stick the two together and study geology, which wasn't something that was taught as part of the high school curriculum where I was. So uh, that really changed things to, to suddenly realise that I could do any branch of science that I was interested in, but take it outdoors. And so I did a geology degree, which I really enjoyed. And I did a geology PhD, which I enjoyed. <laughs> and then finally that sort of worked me around until I, uh, I joined Lamont and have been taking up airborne science. For me, the one thing I would like people to know about climate change is that precision of measurement, that it's, it's not guesswork, it's a lot of hard graft and careful um, estimate of errors and an honest declaration of them, but that the measurements that we make, we make well and dependably and repeatably and uh, it's just reassuring to know that there are hard facts to go back to.